previous video, we focused on recording purchases under a perpetual inventory system. This video will focus on how we record sales under a perpetual inventory system. Sales may be made on credit or for cash. Companies record sales revenue, like service revenue, when the performance obligation is satisfied. Typically, this occurs when the goods are transferred from the seller to the buyer. Every sales transaction should be supported by a business document that provides evidence of the sale, called a sales invoice. The seller makes two entries for each sale. The first entry records the sale. The seller increases or debits cash or accounts receivable if a credit sale and also increases or credits sales revenue. The second entry records the cost of the merchandise sold. The seller increases or debits cost of goods sold and also decreases or credits inventory for the cost of those goods. To illustrate a credit sales transaction, PW Audio Supply records the sale of $3,800 on May 4th by debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales revenue for $3,800. They will also increase or debit cost of goods sold and decrease or credit inventory for the cost of those goods. In this example, we assume the merchandise cost $2,400. We'll now look at the flip side of purchase returns and allowances, which the seller records as sales returns and allowances. These are transactions where the seller either accepts the goods back from a purchaser, which is a return, or grants a reduction in the purchase price so that the buyer will keep the goods, which is an allowance. Sales Returns and Allowances is a contra revenue account to sales revenue. This simply means it offsets the sales revenue account. The normal balance of this account is a debit. Companies use a contra account instead of debiting sales revenue to track the amount of sales returns and allowances. This information is important to management. Excessive returns and allowances suggest problems such as inferior merchandise, inefficiencies in filling orders, or mistakes in delivering or shipment of goods. It could also distort comparisons between total sales in different accounting periods. Years ago, I purchased a pair of earrings from Target for $19.99, and I don't know if you can see them, but these earrings are literally an example of inferior merchandise. They are not made well, <clears throat> they no longer are circle, they've already turned colors, and I would have returned them, but I decided to use them in my lectures. I would like to think that Target saw an increase in sales returns and allowances due to this vendor's inferior product. Another example I personally have of inefficiencies in filling orders or mistakes in delivery of goods is a few years ago I ordered curtains from Pottery Barn and when I opened my package I actually received two candles. This simply means that someone else received my curtains. My guess is the labels were switched. Regardless, Pottery Barn needs to pay to have both orders returned and then they need to resend the correct orders. From a business perspective, we need to monitor a company's returns and allowances, so it's extremely important that we use a contra account and not sales revenue. PW Audio Supplies entries to record credit for returned goods involves an increase or a debit to sales return and allowance and a decrease or a credit to accounts receivable for $300, which is the selling price. We also need to record the cost. And if we assume the cost is $140, then we're going to increase or debit inventory and decrease or credit cost of goods sold. In the previous example, we assumed that the goods were not defective. If they were defective, PW Audio would make an entry to the inventory account to reflect the decline in value. 
if the inventory had a value of $50, then we would increase or debit inventory for $50 and we would decrease or credit cost of goods sold for the same amount. If the goods were not returned, but instead the seller granted the buyer an allowance by reducing the purchase price, the seller would debit sales returns and allowances and credit accounts receivable for the amount of the allowance. An allowance has no impact on inventory or cost of goods sold. As mentioned in our discussion of purchase transactions, the seller may offer the customer a cash discount for the prompt payment of the balance due. The seller refers to this as a sales discount. Like a purchase discount, a sales discount is based on the invoice price, less returns and allowances, if any. The seller increases or debits sales discounts for the discounts that are taken. Like sales returns and allowances, sales discounts is a contra revenue account to sales revenue. Its normal balance is a debit. Sellers use this account instead of debiting sales revenue to track the amount of cash discounts taken by customers. The entry by PW Audio to record the cash receipt on May 14th, which is within the discount period, is to debit cash for $3,430. We're also going to debit sales discount and that is calculated by taking the balance that is due of $3,500 and multiplying that by the 2% discount. The credit to accounts receivable is for $3,500 and that re represents the amount that is due. If the customer does not take the discount, PW Audio simply increases or debits cash for $3,500 and decreases or credits accounts receivable for the same amount at the date of collection. This slide does a fabulous job of summarizing both the sales and purchase transactions for a merchandising company using the perpetual inventory system. Make sure you study this slide carefully.